Hi, my name is Arul George Karia and I am a faculty at the National Law University, Delhi. So the module which we will discuss in this presentation is titled Ambush Marketing. So let me briefly introduce the outline of this lecture. We will be seeing what is ambush marketing, who are affected by ambush marketing, what are the traditional legal measures taken against ambush marketing and how effective are they. We will also see what are the current legal trends in the area and we will also see whether some of the current legal measures violate the important fundamental rights. Let's first see what is ambush marketing. Ambush marketing is a marketing strategy wherein non-sponsors associate themselves with a sponsored event to give an impression of association with the event without formally associating with that event and committing to the financial liabilities involved in it. In other words, ambush marketing can be considered as unexpected interventions from certain companies to create an impression upon spectators or customers that they are associated with an event. So some people call ambush marketers as a uninvited guests to a sponsored event. Let's understand the concept through an example. I hope every one of you knows about Olympics. International Olympics Committee, which is a non-governmental, non-profit organization, owns all the rights relating to the Olympic symbol, Olympic flag, Olympic motto and the Olympic anthem. And IOC has the right to decide the sponsors of the Olympic Games and only those sponsors are allowed to use those symbols. But as we could see from past many incidents, there have been instances where the corporate rivals of those sponsors will be dispatching hundreds of spectators wearing t-shirts and caps with the company logos to stadiums. Sometimes they can also place billboards with the ambush marketer's name and logo adjacent to the site of the event. And in certain instances, it is also seen that the corporate rivalries may supply to the crowds paper flags with the company logo. And in some cases, there have been instances wherein uh, publicity contests were organized and tickets were offered to the event or given prices. Let's take a more recent example, again something which you all know, FIFA World Cup. FIFA has three tier sponsorship system. The highest level is known as FIFA Partners, who have the highest level of association with FIFA and all the FIFA events. So if you look at the last World Cup, you can see that the six major FIFA Partners were Adidas, Coca-Cola, Emirates, Hyundai, Sony and Visa. The second tier is of sponsorship is known as FIFA World Cup Sponsors and they associate with FIFA Confederations Cup and FIFA World Cup on a global basis. And in the last World Cup, we could see Budweiser, Castrol, Continental, Johnson & Johnson, McDonald's, Moipak, Oi and English Solar associating themselves with the FIFA as World Cup sponsors. It is estimated that the FIFA partners paid around 25 to 50 million per year to become the FIFA partners. And the FIFA World Cup sponsors, it is estimated that each of them paid around 10 to 15 million per year. And now FIFA is even planning to have a third tier known as regional supporters. But why are all these corporate firms trying to associate themselves with the event like World Cup? As you must be knowing, the viewership estimate is immense. So there are around 3.2 billion people who have watched World Cup, the last World Cup in Brazil. And this turns out to be around 770 billion minutes of attention. And this is a huge marketing opportunity for brands. And no wonder the vast majority of revenue for FIFA comes from television and marketing rights. Interestingly, 
About the last Brazil World Cup, it is reported that five of the top 11 most shared online football advertisements were from those who were not FIFA partners or FIFA World Cup sponsors. One interesting example which I would like to provide here is a Nike Risk Everything campaign which featured well-known football players without any direct references to World Cup or FIFA. I have provided here the YouTube link to the video and I would strongly recommend all of you to watch it. Similar was the campaign done by the headphones manufacturer Beats who used players like Neymar to promote its headphones during the FIFA World Cup. Important to note here that both of them were not FIFA sponsors but they could actually gather far more audience than most of the sponsors. Just look at the number of people who have viewed it, the videos in YouTube alone. It is also important to mention here briefly why sponsorships are important. Though it is a purely marketing concept, sponsorship needs discussion in the context of this module as ambush marketing occurs in the context of sponsorship of events. And the sponsorship is a form of marketing whereby a sponsor contributes to or underwrites the cost of staging an event or the cost of a participant in a prestigious event or the cost of an individual or a team under a periodic agreement in return for grant of marketing and promotion rights by the sponsored party. And sponsorship provides an opportunity for the sponsor to promote the image of her or his products through an association with the event or individuals concerned. Even though the range of activities and events that receive sponsorship are wide, it is important to note here that cultural and sports events are the ones that are the primary beneficiaries of sponsorship and this is due to their high popularity and public appeal. Between the cultural and sports events, sports score a higher position in sponsorship as a result of potential worldwide audience for the games. And a successful sponsor is the one who becomes synonymous with the event. And today almost all the sporting events across the world depends on sponsorship. In general, sponsorship accounts for around 35% of the revenues of most events. But because of ambush marketing, certain companies are able to capitalize on the goodwill, reputation and popularity of a particular event by creating an association with the event without any authorization or payment of sponsorship fees. Now let's ask who are the stakeholders who are affected by ambush marketing. As you can imagine, the most important group is the sponsors. Ambush marketing damages the exclusivity rights associated with sponsorship. And corporate sponsors will be involving in sponsorship only if they are assured of exclusivity. And when that exclusivity is lost, the value of sponsorship is also lost. Event organizers are also equally affected by ambush marketing. Because, as I mentioned earlier, sponsorship is one of the most important sources of revenue for event organizers across the world. And in some instances, if ambush marketing is prevalent to a very great extent, they may even be forced to return the sponsorship money. Moreover, if ambush marketing is happening consistently, it may even reduce the sponsorship value of events in future. So we need to ask ourselves, Will it be possible to conduct massive events like World Cup or Olympics in the absence of sponsorship? Finally, it is also important to note that at least some section of sports fans or consumers are also affected by ambush marketing because at least in some instances it is leading to clear case of deceptions. As some of the surveys have indicated, Consumers are also sensitive to activities involving Olympic related logos even though the consumer attitudes are found to differ with gender and age. For example, women are seen as more sensitive to dishonest aspects of ambush marketing. Similarly, young consumers in the age group of 18 to 39 are considered to view ambush marketing activities as dishonest, misleading and unethical when compared to other age groups. 
So in this background, two important things which we would like to ask is whether ambush marketing results in violation of intellectual property rights associated with the event and secondly and more importantly, what are the legal measures available against ambush market. So from the perspective of intellectual property rights, ambush marketing is a transgression on the intellectual property rights associated with an event. Even when the ambush marketers are not making any direct references to the protected intellectual property rights, they may be transgressing those intellectual property rights indirectly. But we need to ask ourselves what are the measures available for addressing ambush marketing and more importantly whether traditional remedies like trademark infringement action or passing of action or copyright infringement action can resolve this issue. 